Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and today we're going to take a look at the Synology Disk Station DS716 Plus NAS server. So uh, let's get to it. So let's take a look at the technical specifications on the disk station DS716 Plus from Synology. Now by default, link aggregation is enabled. It's running Intel Celeron quad-core CPU. It has a built-in AES NI hardware encryption engine. It's running two gigs of double DR3 RAM. It's able to expand to seven drives with the DX513 Synology expansion unit. The reading speeds is about 223.47 megabytes per second. And the writing speed is about 137.19 megabytes per second. It's able to support H.264 code as well as MPEG-2 codec, and it's also able to support 4K video format. It supports up to 3.5 to 2.5 SATA 3 or SATA 2 hard drives, and the max internal capacity of hard drive that it can support is up to 16 terabytes of storage space. Now with Synology's DS716 Plus NAS server, there's a bunch of ports. So let's take a look at the front panel. Now the front panel we have one, two, three, LED indicators. One indicator basically gives you the status of uh, overall performance. One is for your LAN and the other one is for your LAN 2. This button right here is your USB copy. We have uh, one 3.0 USB and this is your power. Uh, these two guys right here are your bays, your cradles. And within the cray, you have this nice little mechanism that locks it, so that's pretty cool. So on the back side, we have the power supply, which is right here, which is also running the fan. We have two gigabit uh, Ethernet ports. We have our power supply. We have our reset button right here. We have two additional 3.0 USB ports. And this is our eSATA port. And this right here is your Kingston security slot that you can lock it down. So setting up hard drives with the Synology DS716 Plus NAS server from Synology is extremely easy. Uh, there's no screws at all. I have two hard drives from Western Digitals. Each of them is two terabytes. Uh, this is actually the Enterprise storage, brand new, never been used. So we're going to open these guys up. So once you have your hard drives out, all you have to do is just push in, push in, it's automatically going to eject and all you got to do is just slide it out. Now again, you don't need any type of uh, screws because this right here, you, all you have to do is just pull, pull, insert your hard drive, make sure that the motherboard of the hard drive is facing down and just slide it in, take the sliders, or the, basically these are like, like the lock mechanisms, and you just assert them, push them back in until you hear the click. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. How easy was that? You slide it back in there, and push, and that's it. So we're gonna do the same thing with the other one. Take out these lock mechanisms out, you just push them to the side, Insert your hard drive. Make sure that the motherboard of the hard drive is facing down. Make sure that the slots right here are aligned with the hard drive. Take your mechanism, your lock mechanism, and just insert it again. Push it down until you hear that click. Do the same thing on the other side. Awesome. Insert. There it goes. Insert. And push in and that's it. That's how you install the hard drives. So I'm at my workstation right now. I got the Synology DS716 Plus NAS server. Uh, we already inserted uh, two two terabyte hard drives, giving us a total of four terabytes. Again, this little guy right here will support up to 16 terabytes. So that means two eight terabyte hard drives, either a SATA 3 or SATA 2, which is awesome. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do, I already have the power adapter right here. It's already plugged up. Uh, my setup could be a little different than yours. I have a switch. My switch is uh, providing internet access to my workstation. And I have a ethernet core, which I'm gonna plug it into our switch right here. So let's plug it into our switch. And then we're going to give this guy some power. 
And then again, at the very at the back of the Synology, we have two Ethernets. It's labeled LAN 1 and LAN 2. So I'm actually going to put the cable inside LAN 1. And from here, you have two buttons. Remember, again, the top button right here with the C is the USB copy. Uh, but we're actually going to press the bottom one, which is the power button. So let's click on that. Ooh, it's turning on. Okay, once it's powered on, you're gonna hear the hard drive spin up, which is a good thing. Uh, depending on where you're connecting, my switch right here gave an indication that it is blinking, it is receiving some kind of information, but let's get into the workstation and see if we could find it and configure it. So let's open up a browser. So I'm actually running Windows 10. So within Windows 10, you guys, and I just heard the beep, so that means it's it's booting up properly. Uh, hard drive one and hard drive two, you have LED indicators at the very top. It's green. You got a status of amber, which is blinking. LAN one is solid green. I think the status is amber because we probably need to configure it. So within the browser, we want to actually do is find uh, Synology, findsynology.com, and we're gonna hit enter. And right now it's searching. So I'm assuming it's searching throughout the network and see if it could pick up our, our NAS. Awesome, it found it. Uh, it actually has an IP address. Uh, it depends on how you have your network configured. If, you have, if your network is configured to automatically pick up uh, an IP address from your DHCP server, it would pick it up, awesome. Uh, we are going to hit connect. Uh, we're going to do setup for now. Install Disk Station Manager, which is the DCM. This is the operating system to run the Synology, so we need this. What are we going to install now? All data on the hard drive 1 and 2 will be removed during the installation, so I understand that. Again, uh, they're both new hard drives, so that's that's it should go really fast. Okay, so once your Synology DS716 Plus is rebooted, uh, it's going to beep, it's going to blink, and your web browser, if everything goes well, it should welcome you. So let's click on next. Uh, create your administrative account below. Information will be used to manage your security. So uh, let's give it uh, BTNHD for the server name. Uh, the admin would be BJ Tech News. We're going to give it a password and make sure the password is very strong. Uh, share the network location of your disk station with Synology. I'm not going to do that right now. Let's click on next. And, uh, yep, we recommend to keep your DSM up to date to help secure your disk station. Please select an updated setting. Install the latest version automatically. Install important. So I'm, I will leave the recommended part. Uh, and you can actually schedule it. So I'm just going to leave the default. And you can actually set up a quick connect, uh, create a quick connect ID with a Synology ID. I'm not going to do that right now. So I'm going to say uh, create an ID with an existing. So I'm not going to do this part right now. I'm just going to skip this step. If you skip this step, you need to set up the port forwarding to romantically access your disk station over the internet. I'm not going to do that right now, but again, if you guys do want to access your Synology uh, remotely, make sure that you do the configuration of the Quick Connect. But I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to actually skip that. And it's, I'm all set, and I'm just hitting get go. Right now, it's loading the web interface, which is awesome, and it's going to load up, and that's it. Uh, they give you a cool, nice little tip. Tip one, access all your built-in and install packages from the main menu. So let's click on the main menu. Uh, tip two, discover more applications at the package center. Tip three, this is more settings are available in the control panel. And this is it. This is pretty awesome. This is pretty sweet. They give you a nice little uh, dialog box to help offer comprehensive articles to help you find more information. I'm going to click OK. But uh, automatically, the way that the GUI feels, it feels like a Mac environment. Again, the Synology NAS servers are great for a Mac environment. Uh, from here, let's go to File Station. And uh, there's no share folders available. If you want to go to the share folder page to create a share folder, click OK. So uh, I'm going to press no available volume. Please create a new volume. So we're going to create a new volume. Awesome. So let's click here. Let's create a new volume. Let's do a quick next. Uh, this one, this two, next. 
All the data is going to be erased. That's okay. Perform a disk check. Automatically, it recommends you to do a disk check. So let's click on next. Uh, this is the BTF RFS is actually the format system that Synology uses. I'm going to use it and we're going to click on next on that and we're going to apply it. So it's actually using a Synology hybrid RAID, which is awesome. I'm assuming a RAID may be zero and the volume is being created. So right now it's verifying the hard disk in the background. And as you can see, if you do it by IP address, it's going to want you to uh, put the admin. So I think the username that we gave it was BJ Tech News and we're going to enter the password. And then there it goes. I'm inside the share already, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but again, it's still verifying the disk. But once you verify the disk, I'm assuming that you're able to go in here. Uh, you're able to create your new folder. So let's create a folder. Let's call uh, YouTube uh, video uh, storage. All right. And we're going to press OK. You had more options there. Uh, read and write, definitely. Guest has read and write. Admin has read and write. Press OK. So right now I just created a new volume. So that means if I go inside our run command and go back in here, there goes our share folder that we created. Awesome. And I'm able to just go in here and just go crazy. So if I just go here and copy this 4K video and just paste it, let's see how fast this pace goes. Now this is about uh, a couple of megs. It's taken at least a minute, which is not that bad. That's pretty fast. Let's take a look at the file system. So I'm going to close this up. Uh, I'm going to close this up. And the rate is still being verified from the disk. Even though you guys see this, you could, you're still able to configure it and create a volume, create a share, push it out, and do whatever you need. Right now, uh, with the two terabyte hard drives that I have, again, I have four terabytes in total. Uh, with the RAID system that they're providing, they're going to give me about 1.74 terabytes with the file system of BTRFS, which is their file system. And so far, I'm super excited, and it's already done. It took m maybe a minute or so to copy over a uh, 64, a 646 megabyte file, which is 4K, and it, it was pretty fast, a minute. That's pretty cool. And that's it, guys. That concludes our hands-on review with the Synology Disk Station DS716 Plus NAS server with the two bay. I mean, it's extremely easy to set up. I mean, I recommend anyone getting it, especially if you guys are uh, doing a lot of video editing or you need a NAS server or a storage device in your infrastructure to, you know, for your Mac servers or even for your PC servers. This is a great find, a great buy. Uh, all the details for the pricing and everything, I'm gonna put it at the bottom of the description so you guys could go check that out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this hands-on review. Uh, leave comments right below. Don't forget about hitting that like button because it does support the NAS server world. <laughs> and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.